Happy High, der Thomas ist dabei. Ich fühle mich frei, ist mir eine. Generator, generator. Caution, caution. Welcome to this training mission in which we will cover the main features of the Harrier navigation systems. We will go over the nav mode, EHSD, or electronic horizontal situation display, as well as take in, waypoints, mark points, and offsets. The AV-8B Harrier uses both the INS and GPS systems for navigation, usually in a closely coupled mode. Each has their advantages and disadvantages. INS, or Inertial Navigation System, is a self-contained, fully automatic dead reckoning navigation system that does not require any external signals to operate, but it does accumulate some error over time. GPS, or the Global Positioning System, is a space-based radio positioning system which provides suitably equipped users with very accurate position, velocity, and time data. However, it is useless if the satellites are not available for any reason. If IFA is selected, which should be the case for your jet, the navigation system enters a tightly coupled mode. This means that the GPS is continuously providing corrections to the INS platform. Now, if IFA is selected without aligning the INS, GPS will be used to align the INS in flight. While the end result will be the same, it is always recommended to do the INS alignment first and to perform flights without GPS on a regular basis to verify that the INS is functioning properly. Alright, we will start with the Nav Master Mode. Please take off, climb to Angels 10, and fly towards Waypoint 1. We will pick up when you are at that altitude with Gear Up and Nav Master Mode selected. In Navigation Master Mode, primary flight information is presented on the HUD and MPCD on the EHSI slash EHSD display. You can select three steering modes, first to waypoint, mark, or their respective offset point. 
Second, to take in or its offset point. Third is the AWSL, or all-weather landing system, which will not be covered in this training session. Most of the data presented on your HUD is pretty self-explanatory, but there are a few things worth noting. First of all, the number to the left of the velocity vector shows the calibrated airspeed, which is not the indicated airspeed as many people think. KCAS, or NOTS calibrated airspeed, is the indicated airspeed, or IAS, corrected for instrument and position error. Below it, you also have the Mach number and ground speed displayed. Your heading displayed on the tape can either be a true heading, in which case the letter T is visible next to it, or magnetic. You can switch between the two on your EHSD page. Last thing we should mention is that in nav mode you may sometimes see a ghost velocity vector at the true velocity vector position. As in nav, your vertical velocity, or VV, is always gauged to the vertical center line of the HUD. This will most typically be the case in strong crosswinds, and it will indicate the true flight path of your jet. Your EHSD page should already be visible on your left MPCD. If it isn't, press the sensor select switch button left once. Talking about the sensor select switch, if you press it left once again, you will enter the decentered mode. Please do it. You will see that the aircraft symbol is now on the bottom of the screen. This mode is useful if you want to have a better view of the area up ahead. Return to normal mode by pressing the SSS left. You will find the full description of different symbols visible on the EHSD in your kneeboard and mission documentation. Now let's go through different features and options available for the pilot. First, we will focus on setting up your display and changing what you can see. In order to do so, press MAPM on push button 3. After pressing it, you only have 5 seconds to make another selection. If you don't press anything else during that time, MAPM will become unboxed and you will have to press it again. That is why we will be choosing different options at the end of each set of instructions. So, press the MAPM again and then SEQ on push button 4. When boxed, this option allows you to see all the waypoints and mark points stored in the system. When it is unboxed, only the currently selected waypoint or mark point will be visible. Note that, regardless of the mode, you will only be able to see the offset point, if set, for the currently selected waypoint. To have a better view, you might want to set the scale to 100 with push button 20. Press the MAPM on push button 3 and then TRUE on push button 2. This button changes between the TRUE and magnetic heading on the HUD and EHSI. When TRUE is boxed, the letter T is also visible next to the heading tape on your HUD. Return to magnetic heading display and let me know when you are ready to continue. Press the MAPM on push button 3 and then tracks on push button 1. This turns on and off the ground track line connecting the aircraft symbol with the ground track indicator. Note that the indicator will always remain on, showing the aircraft's true ground track. Set this option as desired and press the MAPM on push button 3 and then zoom on push button 19. 
Zoom offers additional scales for the map view. The setting depends on the currently selected scale. 50 when 100 is set, 13 when 25 is set, 6 when 13 is set, and 3 when 5 is set, thus giving you three additional viewing levels. Go ahead and change the scale with push button 20 and check the zoom setting for both centered and decentered mode. Press the MAPM on push button 3 and then N up. This switches map view between the north up or track up modes. When ready, unbox the N up and let me know when you are ready to continue. Press the MAPM on push button 3 and then EHSI. Unboxing this option disables the display of the compass rows, lever line, and teed legend, ground track symbol, waypoint offset, take hand, and target bearing pointers. Make sure to turn them back on before we continue. Press the MAPM on push button 3 and then map on push button 12. Pressing this push button enables display of map video if location is covered by the map and if map scene is ready for display. Conversely, if it is already boxed, it disables the map view. The OL1 and OL2 are linked to the NSEQ button and change the information overlays on the map. Let's talk about the first of three available steering modes. To waypoint, mark point, and offset point. Please select waypoint 3. Make sure that waypoint info next to push button 11 is boxed. You can switch waypoints in two ways, by pressing the waypoint increment button on your stick, or pressing up and down arrows on your EHSD page with push buttons 12 and 13. Currently chosen waypoint is marked with a dot at the middle of the circle. You'll notice that the waypoint bearing pointer, triangle with a little circle located inside the compass rows, is pointing towards it. You should also see the heading to select a destination indicated on the heading tape on the HUD. Go ahead and turn towards waypoint 3. Both your HUD and EHSD give you the following basic information. Waypoint number, bearing, distance and nautical miles, and time to go. You can also access a more detailed view of each waypoint. In order to learn more about waypoint 3, make sure it is selected and enter the data page by pressing push button 2. You can see additional information about the waypoint, including its name, exact position and lat long in UTM formats, elevation, declination, and magnetic variation. The WGS-84 displayed on the left is the standard U.S. Department of Defense definition of a global reference system for geospatial information. Since we are here, let's talk about editing waypoint information. It can be done in two ways. 
by updating the data using the ODU options, or by moving the waypoint around the map. Make sure you are still in the data mode and select waypoint 1. You should notice different options showing up on your ODU. Let's move this waypoint over the Sinaki Airport. Press ODU button 2, marked POS, for position. Now on the scratch pad, enter new sets of coordinates. Start with 2 for north, then type 421427 and press enter. Press ODU button 2 again. Press 6 on the scratch pad for east, and then type 0420252 and press enter. Your waypoint 1 should now be in the middle of the runway. Let's look at the second option of editing it. Stay in the data mode with waypoint 1 selected. Change the map scale to 25. Make sure that the scale is not set to auto. Use your TDC switch to move the waypoint around the map. Place it over Pody. Now it is time to sweeten it a little. Change the scale to 5 and place your waypoint over the western bridge north of Pody. As you can see, you can either move the waypoint around the map quickly with the scale set to 100 or 25, or make very detailed adjustments with the setting of 5 or 3. Good. Turn towards waypoint 1 in its new position. Using ESHD, scale and zoom options, set the scale to 50. Okay, now we will cover creating and using waypoint offsets. Please select waypoint 4 for that.
Offset points are determined in relation to a specific waypoint, mark point, or take-in station. That means that for each waypoint in your flight plan, you can create one unique offset point. The most common example of using the offset point is to mark the bullseye calls. Usually one of the waypoints will be placed over bullseye location and is used as a reference for calls made by AWACS or other units. Waypoint 4 plays this role for us during the sortie. Let's say that the threat is at Bulls 146-413. This means bearing 146 from waypoint 4 at a distance of 13 miles from it. Let's introduce these values. First, choose data by pressing push button 2. Verify that you can see a 4 on your scratch pad, which means that you have chosen waypoint 4. Press ODU button 1 marked waypoint. The options will change to WO slash S, which means offset. Press ODU button 2 to select bearing, then type 146 on the scratch pad and press enter. Now press ODU button 4 to select range, then type 13 on the scratch pad and press enter. Deselect data by pressing push button 2 again and change scale if necessary. Verify that the offset point symbol is over Kovaletti Airport. Even though we have created a new offset point, your aircraft navigation system still uses Waypoint 4 as active steering destination. If you want to feed the offset point data into the system, you need to press push button 14 for that. Do it now. Arrows on your EHSD and HUD should now be pointing towards the offset. Verify that they do. When ready, press push button 11 in order to return to waypoint steering. Okay, now let's practice another thing, creating new waypoints. For that, we will place the new waypoint in the middle of the small abandoned airfield south of Kovaletti. In order to create a new waypoint, you need to select any number higher than the current number of waypoints and mark points stored in the system. Let's do it now. First, make sure that the waypoint next to push button 11 is boxed. Next, choose data. Your currently selected waypoint number should be visible on the scratch pad. Type 77 and press enter. The system will automatically choose the first free waypoint slot and mark that as its new waypoint with an asterisk next to it. If you didn't create any mark point, this should be waypoint 7. Now we need to introduce its coordinates. Press ODU button 2 to select position and press 2 for north and then 415031. Confirm with enter.
press position once again and type 6 for east and then press 0414752. Confirm with enter. Great, the new waypoint is now created. Time to learn another new thing. Using the course line in order to arrive at the waypoint from desired bearing or with desired heading. Unbox the data mode and select waypoint 7. Change the map scale as desired in order to see waypoint 7. We will want to overfly one of the runways from the southwest to the northeast with a true heading of 031 degrees. First, make sure that true is boxed when you press the MAPM push button. Then rotate the course line select knob. You will notice a line with the selected waypoint in the middle. Turn it until the CRS setting in the bottom right part of the display shows 031. Now turn towards the line and intercept it south from the waypoint. When you get closer, change the scale of the map for greater accuracy. Descend to 2,000 feet and try to fly directly over the line on heading 031. If you have done everything correctly, you should now be directly over the runway at a correct heading. The course line is useful for many different things. 
approaches for landing when you align it with the runway, or attack runs from a specific direction. You will find yourself relying on it quite a lot. There is also one very nice feature linked to the course line, which is the delta information. It is located in the bottom right corner of the display and shows how far you actually are from the course line. This will prove invaluable in the raked range pattern or LHA recoveries. That covers the waypoint part of the training. Let's move on to the next one, the mark points. The only difference between mark point and a waypoint is the way in which they are created. In all other respects, mark points are treated as normal waypoints. Make sure that you are on the EHSD page in waypoint steering mode and that you can see MK0 legend above push button 19. When you press it, you will create a mark point exactly below the location of your jet. The system can handle up to 9 mark points. If you create more, the next ones will overwrite mark point 1, 2, and so on. Go ahead and press MK0. The only immediate effect is that the legend changes to MK1. However, if you cycle your waypoints up, you'll notice that it has been added after waypoint 7 and is displayed on EHSD as mark point 1. However, the system saved it as waypoint 8, which you can verify in the data mode. There's no need to do it now though. As mark points are treated in all respects as normal waypoints. With the only difference of their names displayed on ESHD, you can edit their position or create offsets in exactly the same manner. Since the procedure is identical as for waypoints, instead let's move on to the last part of this mission covering the takeout. We did touch up on the takeout a little on the takeoff and air refueling missions. By now you should know how to properly set up your system, but in order to have everything covered, let's describe all the basic options. To enable take in options on the ODU, press the TCN button on the UFC. You should now see the selected channel on the scratch pad, as well as various modes of operation displayed on the ODU. If they disappear before we are done, press the TCN button again. The first two are TR, or Transfer Receive, and RCV for Receive Only. The first one will provide you with both the bearing and the distance from the selected station. The second will provide you with only the bearing. The third option enables the air-to-air -air mode of operation. If this is deselected, take and defaults to communicating with the ground station. In this mode, you can also choose between TR and RCV, depending if you need to receive bearing and distance, or only the distance. Push button 4 selects either X-ray or Yankee channel of operation. It is coupled with the channel number introduced using the kneeboard.
The tone option allows the take in identification tone to be turned on or off. The volume can be regulated using the outer volume or auxiliary knob on the ACNIP panel. All right, let's tune to Couple Eddy, which is at channel 67 X ray. First, press the take hand button on the UFC again if necessary. Now introduce the correct channel number. Press 6, then 7, then enter. Verify that X ray is displayed next to ODU button 4. Finally, make sure that ON is visible on the scratch pad. If it isn't, press the ON-OFF button on the UFC. Good, now have a look at your EHSD page. Make sure that the take hand text next to push button 5 is boxed. Change the zoom as necessary in order to see the characteristic take hand symbol over Coppoletti. You should also see a take hand steering bug looking like an inverted triangle located outside the compass rows. On your HUD, you should see a normal steering information, including the bearing to the selected take hand station and the distance. Turn towards Cabaletti now. Last thing we need to cover when talking about take hand is the offset mode. It is very useful in many situations, especially when you are given a specific marshal during boat recoveries. For this approach, let's set up an initial point for Capoletti located 5 nautical miles away from the runway on the 064 radial. First, with take hand still selected on your EHSD, press OSB 14 to enable the offset mode selection. On the ODU, you will now have two options, RNG for range and BRG for bearing. First, let's set the bearing. Make sure that the BRG is colonized on ODU2 and type 064 using the scratch pad. Confirm with enter. Now press ODU button 4 to select the distance and type 05 followed by enter. You should see a new take and offset symbol on the EHSD, roughly 5 miles away from the runway. You can now switch the displayed steering cues between the take and or take and offset by pressing push button 5 and 14 respectively. You can also switch to waypoint mode by pressing push button 11. You can now proceed to Cabaletti and land, like a motivated pilot, or exit the mission now. This concludes the navigation training. Cabaletti, Dodge, 1-1, one, one. inbound. Alright, 1-1, Cabaletti, flying heading 268, 
Lady. Dodge, one, one, request landing.
So there's a joke in the Marine Corps about nothing being more dangerous than a second lieutenant with a map and a compass. The Marine Corps Harrier has a fancy color-moving map system with redundant GPS and INS systems. Lots of features. Coincidence? I really doubt it. Thank <laughs> you. 